Why? Because that's what my real passion was, is teaching and guiding people to wake themselves up to who they really are versus who they think they are. And some of the people you see on the call here are graduates of that and teachers themselves and uh, fantastic teachers, I might add, of that program. And it's gone on for 30 years. But we all have to start somewhere, right? So if you look on your screen, you're going to see the first thing we call the jump. And that's jumping into the places that we don't want to jump necessarily. Now, jump doesn't mean that you have to literally jump in you know, to the deep end of the pool and feel like you're overwhelmed. It just means you have to jump to the first step. Coming here today is a great example of what a first step can look like. Because here is a response mechanism from a group of great teachers over the last week who have all come together and said, hey, look, this is our passion. This is now the time more than ever to take that first step. And just being here is that first step. Now you're probably going, well, Travis, that's not a big deal. I'm, I'm stuck in my house. I've got nothing better to do. What a beautiful opportunity that is. Now the question becomes, what do you do with that opportunity? Are you going to look through it through the lens of mindset? Or are you going to be willing to drop down and look into jump into your heart, which is why you see the logo on your screen is a part of the jump. Because you have to do everything first by jumping in. You got to jump into the pool. You got to jump into a relationship. You got to jump in to go on a first date. You got to jump into a new job. You got to jump into inside of you and look at what's going on. You've got to jump somewhere. And if you've ever been on a bungee, you got to jump there too, right? Or you can get repelled by the mindset of fear and continue to go backwards to which you already came and have already experienced, only doomed to repeat it. So the jump today is going to talk about the riches versus wealth. And part of this, you'll see in the deeper part of the jump, if you ever go through the entire training, not an obligation to do so, but if you do, you'll get experience of it. And you'll see how it's a step-by-step -step system. You see, I'm one of those people that said, hey, man, this law of attraction thing is really cool. I think I get it. But when I think this, how come it doesn't show up? Like, gee, I want that new job, or I want a Lamborghini, or I want to stop getting gray hair. <laughs> Any of those things mysteriously didn't show up. There's a lot of gaps in there. Now, I do know a little bit about this topic. I'll never claim to be an expert on, on the laws outside of Earth because I'm on Earth too with you at the same time. However, as you'll see, and we'll pop, we'll pop this link in, the long-awaited follow-up film to The Secret on Law of Manifestation is actually releasing tomorrow. How do I know that? I'm one of the producers of the film. I'm also in the film with all some of the original castmates and all my other castmates, where we're going to talk about going deeper in law of manifestation. You see, I'm a how-to guy, so maybe you are too. And many other great teachers here that have been on this fest with us are also as well, but I'm really that micro step-by-step -step guy. I want to know why it's happening, how I can apply it, and where am I going to experience it so that I can validate everything that just happened to me as credible. You see, because I struggled when I was back in, in young 1920s and going through school going, well, if I just think it, it'll show up. Well, that's funny because I wanted the golf ball to go straight down the fairway and damn it, it can't going out of bounds in the water. Well, that can't happen because I wouldn't have thought that. I wouldn't do that to myself. Yet it kept happening. So there's this disconnect between what this puppy up here, our mind, or what we call in the architect language, the hypnotist, who keeps hypnotizing us to believe a bunch of BS. Now, um, oh, by the way, sidebar, here's an example of what I mean by that. Have you noticed everyone's been running around lately? Got to get toilet paper, got to get toilet paper, got to get toilet paper. I'm really curious. You're more worried about your rear end being clean, but your head being full of crap. Now, does that make sense to anybody in the known world? I mean, I just want to point that out. But that shows where our priority structure says, well, as long as my backside's clean, this can be full of crap all at once, and it's okay. That's completely bass backwards. This thing is the one that's full of crap that we need to clear out and unwind and get down into the architect's heart. And that's what this entire process that we've developed over 30 years and have tested around the world with thousands of people to replicate it, that it does work. Now, I want to be really crystal clear. We are not an MLM. We are not a cult. We are not do as Travis Fox says and be like Travis Fox. It's completely the opposite. If you're like me, woe unto you, right? <laughs> what, I, what we're interested in the architect of being is a system and step-by-step -step awareness of clinical application and experience where you can unwind and walk yourself all the way down step-by-step, -step, understand how your beliefs are created, what a higher value system is for you, where the emotional structures or blocks are, and then unwind those and really come from the place of you, not who you think you are or are programmed to be, but who you really are. Because we all can agree now, I think more than ever, there's also, we're all part of something bigger than ourselves. Now, you can call that whatever you want. I'm not educated enough to call it anything. You, we call it great spirit and architect language. You can call it God, Jesus, Allah, Yahweh, Krishna, Ganesh, um, Buddha, enlightenment, universal mind, I don't care. You can call it whatever you want. But let's agree that down here at architect land, in your heart, 
there's a little bit of a thing called a pounding. We call that a heart ping. Now, maybe you've already experienced that. And it's that little kind of anxious feeling. You can maybe feel like you know, little gremlins trying to beat your uh, rib cage and break open. You can just kind of feel it. That's a heart ping. That's your architect already right now going, hey, listen up. This is what we're talking about. It isn't this stuff that's going on up here. And it's time to jump from here to here, which seems like a really big jump for most of us and sometimes can be because down here in our beautiful darkness of the places we don't talk about at cocktail parties, it gets a little scary. We have to talk about hurts. We have to talk about um, traumas. We have to talk about grievances. We have to talk about resentment. We have to talk about things we don't want to talk about because what if they find out we're all messed up? What if they find out we're just a big ball of emotional goo? What if they find out I'm not cool and I'm just a big dork? What if they find out I'm not the success I'm supposed to be on my social media? What if they find out I actually give a crap about things that seem heebie-jeebie and aren't the cool political things to talk about? What if they find out? Here's the funny thing. They're thinking the same thing. We're all just full of crap. We're just too busy worrying about our backside and not getting this thing unwound. And the jump's going to invite you to that today. So you can decide whether you want invest to in, invest in the richness of your mind or you can really pull out and empower yourself and evoke the wealth of who you already are and just forgot and self-hypnotize yourself to be. So that's the introduction to the jump. So I'll start with that. That's a little dissertation you can see on your screen. Welcome to the jump. We're going to pop right into it. So here's the first question you'll see on your screen right there. It says, how do we determine if we are creating richness or wealth? Now, I gave you a little bit of a precursor in that opening, uh, opening monologue, and thanks for enduring that monologue, but that's what we're talking about. So here's the answer. The conditions, hold on for the ride, family. This is not going to be the shallow end of the pool, and if you have thin skin, you probably should wait for some of the other speakers because I'm going to go right down to the bottom because we don't have time to mess around. We're going to dive. Get ready. Gear up. We're jumping. So here's the answer. The conditions with which we, are, which we see reflected in the external world, meaning outside our eyeballs, right? are mirrored conditions which we find on the internal world. And this is brought on by the law of love. Now, one of the things I love talking about in the law of attraction, because I've been, I've been in the law of attraction for a long time, believe it or not. And there's a lot of a law of attraction experts out there, which I find fascinating because I'm like, how the hell are you an expert at anything? I know I'm not, I'm 49 years old. and I just discovered I have no idea what the hell I'm actually talking about. I got all these letters before and after my name. Hell, half the time I don't know how to spell my name, but I don't consider myself an expert. How can you? Because if you're an expert and you were truly all the way unpowered of law of attraction, you could think it, boom, and it shows up in real time. Because that's what every major theology, every major religion says is possible potential when we're in full alignment. Can we come close to that? And can we dance with that? Yes. But wouldn't it be more interesting to discover if we could stay in at least an 80 or 90% space and then the 10% that we go through, learn to understand how to unwind it to get more and more as we go along. And that's what this first thing is about. How do you determine that? So it's a real simple thing. You ever had those days? I mean, you wake up and you're just like, yeah, I'm going to watch Travis Fox on the Corona Fest. We're going to jam with we'll Chelsea, with the architect. This is going to be a dope day. I'm going to jam and shit. Everything from that moment on turns to hell in a handbasket. Everyone's an asshole. They cut you off on the freeway. The coffee maker blows up. You spill crap all over your white shirt. You're like, this is fucking bullshit. I won't what's going on. The world's gone to batshit crazy because it can't be me because I'm a fucking expert in the law of attraction. Okay, smarty pants. So let's deal with that for the truth. You want to know how you know you're not an expert? Because the moment you said you're an expert is the first time you need to recognize your fucking mind is the one running the show. So let's own that. Okay. You're not an expert in dog shit. All right. Neither am I. Here's the thing we're only good at being experts at. We're all fucking dead, right? Deal with it. Now you can call that coronavirus. You can call that H1N1. You can call that HIV. You can call it cancer, or you can just call it life. Because guess what's going to fucking happen? Everyone's getting out the same, broke and dead. So let's own that start from the truth. We're so busy hypnotizing ourselves and to believe we're getting rich and we're making money and we're getting the cars and we're getting all this other stuff. Great. You financed every fucking thing. So you're really just a slave and you feel really cool. So let me ask you something. When the world finally says, time out, Mr. Expert or Mrs. Expert, is it possible? Is it possible that you're running around on some back-ended programs? Maybe, just maybe, you're creating the riches of your mind in an effort to avoid 
big word, avoid what's going on down here. And the first way that you can notice that is when those days like that go where you feel aligned and everything goes batshit crazy, there's something on going down here in La La Land you don't want to talk about. I get it. The beautiful darkness can be scary, but it's beautiful because when you dive through the darkness, you are already light. One of the great things I love talking to people about is go, I want to be more light. I want to put light in the world. Shut the fuck up. You are already light. You don't have to be light. You're already light. What you get to do is pull all the stuff off that you have sheltered your light from being. You were already light. This is a bunch of bullshit. This is more mindset of your ego saying, well, you have to be more light. You have to be more perfect. You have to walk on water and doggone it. People better like you because they're going to find out you're an asshole. You're an asshole. So what? It's okay to be an asshole. The difference is what is making you an asshole in the inside? And can we own that? So riches versus wealth is going to say time out. This whole ideology, this whole thought process that if I think it'll show up is linear. There's nothing linear on any part of our world. That's why it's called Architecting 360, right? And that's why you see on your screen called the law of love. Everything starts with the law of love. Law of attraction is actually a spinoff or one of the sub laws of law of love. But we really made it something to more than what it is. But the wealth of you is already here, meaning you are already bigger than you think you are. You are already more powerful than you're willing to ever admit in this puppy up here. You are already more dynamic, more loving, more sexy, more awesome, more manly, more alpha, more beta, whatever the hell you want to put the label on than you could ever possibly fathom because this thing is stupid. Everything up here in your brain was learned from the past. So to sit there and say, to ask something that is a past-oriented vehicle, meaning this puppy here, to create something in a future that you have zero control over is absolute madness. Is anybody starting to pick up on the concept yet? You're starting to see how this works, right? The concept that we need to be more of something is an egoic mindset of investing in riches. More means I'm not enough. Somewhere down here in the deep darkness of ourselves that we don't want to talk about at cocktail parties. So when you get to look outside your world and you see all this stuff going crazy, and now here's the opposite, by the way, just so you have a clarity. You ever had those days where you're grumpy? Ah, the coffee tastes like crap. Got up late and the dog gone a grump. I would have kicked the dog and shit. You walk out the door and everybody's smiling at you. They all smile like, hey, Trav, what's going on? You're like, ah, don't smile at me. I'm having a bad day, right? But everybody's smiling. Why? Because deep down inside, you're still happy, but you're too busy clouding your own light being full of crap. Now, is it exclusive to you? No. Do I do it every day? You bet. Of course. The difference is myself and all the architects in the architect community globally, we have a system to unwind that. That's what makes you wealthy. See, money can be taken away from you. Cars can be repossessed. Homes can be uh, uh, foreclosed on. Lovers come and go. People pass on and take the great journey every single freaking day. But the wealth of who you are, the wealth that you came into this being in, in and will leave, commonly called birth and death, is constant. It's the stuff that we stuff down through compression, suppression, and oppression over a lifetime of stuff through trauma and fracturing of who we are to become who we think we are. So by the time you're around 40 years old, all of a sudden you got like 40 different voices running around in your head and you feel like a multiple personality disorder and you're having a damn board meeting in your head half the time. And imagine being somebody else with 40 voices in their head. There's 80 voices talking. It's like freaking white noise everywhere. And we got to calm the madness down. Now, here's the, excuse me, here's the irony. The world's doing it for us right now. Mama Earth, great spirit, has finally said, all right, listen, you bunch of expert human beings, you clearly aren't getting the message. Remember those dinosaurs? Well, I wiped their ass out too because they didn't listen. So if you monkeys don't get it together and start waking your ass up and figuring out that you're all connected, we're all one big part, I'm going to wipe your ass off the planet and I'm going to prove it. I'm going to create this little thing called this virus that's about the size of a, a micro nano that's going to wipe you out to show you you're not in control up here, that you're not as powerful up here as you think you are, that we can truly come from the law of love, not the law of attraction. That's a derivative of it, but the law of, uh, law of love. And you'll learn today what's called the seminal law or the law of curiosity. So you can learn where you are in your life's journey. i studied over tens of hundreds of thousands of, of humans who have traveled. So you know where you are. So you can kind of get an idea of what your stage of development is in the journey. Does it mean you always are going to go through it? No, but it's a pretty good snapshot of it. 
But we can start to look outside ourselves and go, huh, if everybody's smiling, maybe I'm just being a knucklehead. Or if everyone's being grumpy and I'm smiling, maybe I'm not really dealing with what's going on down here, but it's a beautiful reflection. And in architect language, every person we meet, we take ownership that every person we meet is a reflection of ourselves. That we're not the teacher, we're the student. We learn, right? Because that person is gracious enough to reflect back to me what I'm not looking at or what I am looking at or what I wanna develop more of. And I can see myself outside myself because right now, I'm on your screen, you and I are looking at each other. This is a quote unquote conversation. However, when you really think about it, you can't see yourself inside yourself like your eyeballs are seeing the screen right now. So the way this beautiful universe is created in three dimension is that when I'm looking at you and you're looking at me, I'm seeing you outside of myself and you're seeing you outside of yourself. I mean, seeing see me outside of myself, excuse me, and you're seeing you. My eyes are looking at you and oh, that's that part of my personality that does that. Got it. Now I can start to decide and feel, more importantly, does this align with the type of person I feel I want to be or become? Do I want to unwind that part of my personality? Do I not want to be a knucklehead anymore? You see, 20 years ago, when I was Dr. Fox and thought I knew everything, I know, shit, I was walking around, I had the perfect life. I had the blonde wife, I had the two kids and the cars and the RVs and the houses, and I was Mr. Successful. I was the guy that had all the answers, like every other self-help guru douchebag out there who thinks they've got the answer. I was doing the same thing because that's what they told me to be. You see, because Dr. Fox is supposed to have all the answers. Newsflash, third child shows up when I'm 30 years old. Autistic. Oh, snap. Well, I don't remember having to deal with a lot of autism. In fact, autism, when I went through, was deemed as mental retardation. It wasn't that. It was ADHD or it was labeled, labeled something else. I had no idea how to communicate with my third, my third child, my second son. My first two were neurotypical. I thought I had this parenting thing down to a science. This thing is cake. Got a boy, got a girl, snapped out. They're overachievers. They're super perfectionists. Travis Fox is the shit. Yeah. And then my third son shows up and goes, eh, wait a minute, time out. You know, you kind of got it when you were 19, but you went a little bit back asleep again and you created this other personality called Dr. Fox and you got all these letters around your name and you got some fame and you got some money and all of a sudden now you think you know shit. Right turn. Boop. Now we're going to give you an autistic. Oh, wait a minute. So you mean the very thing that I've been trained in, mindset, communication, psychological interrogation, psychodynamics, psycholinguistics, all of these wonderful things, all these years of experience went right out the door. Whoop. I now have to learn to communicate with someone who doesn't use verbal as a communication. Snap. Shit. Now what? Huh. Now, you can take a choice there, family. Now, for those of your autistic parents will get this response mechanism, you can make a choice. You can either blame yourself, you can blame the child, you can act like it doesn't exist, or you get to face the beautiful reflection of, ah, my child is inviting me to go to the next level of communication that I, in my beautiful darkness, was scared shitless to be. Because if people found out that Dr. Fox wasn't perfect, that he was a mess, that he had insecurities, that he was all screwed up, and he was just trying to work his own journey out and create a system so other people could do it because that's the journey he was on, that would blow my whole image. My social media page would have a zero like net factor. Of course, we didn't have social media back then, so it really didn't matter. That tells you how old I am. So third child comes along, and all of a sudden, we have to invest in wealth. See, I'd had the riches of the mind. I got it. Got it down to a science, literally down to a science. But I didn't know how to communicate here. Even though I was on the heart's path from 19, I still had been investing here. I invested literally 11 years of my life in this space. Train corporations, thousands of people, stages. Uh, air television, you name it, did it, but didn't still know how to do this. And when my, my second son, my third child came along, everything changed. So now we get to look at how architecting helps you invest in wealth generation versus actual mindset generation as you walk through the journey with me. And maybe you can parallel this along the way. So let's move a little further here. All right. So here's the first couple things we can look at. So the law of curiosity, which I was just talking about a moment ago, has a period of birth um, growth, we call it froth in our world, <laughs> fruitage, decline, and rebirth. And it's been referred to as septiminal, uh, septiminal law, excuse me, septiminal law. Why? Because we go into these kind of periods of seven. So let's kind of go all the way back. Now, all of us came in this wonderful thing called birth. Now, if you weren't birthed through a woman, then you are truly the anomaly on the planet. So let's just agree that we all came through on this planet, male or female, from a woman. Deal? Which means for a period of time, we were all male and female at one period of time, period, right? That's, that's called 
for those of you who aren't parents yet, that's when you go through the pregnancy, look it up, have another time, we'll talk about it later. But for now, let's look at that. So we all came in here. We've all experienced the energy of yin and yang. Now, we'll dominate to one or the other, depending on what we come out as a gender. But then the ideal balance, we become both. That's part of what this awakening is, We're, in my opinion, what we're going to is the awakening of understanding. I'm not talking about androgyny. I'm talking about understanding balance. We are so out of freaking balance. And that's what riches versus wealth is talks about. But the law of curiosity says about every seven years, we go through the next stage. So the zero through seven is called the imprint stage. I'm sure you've heard this term before. It's a very well, well-known psychological term. But in the first seven years of our life, we have these things called the four pillars that we talk about in architect language called mother, father, religion, and state, right? These are the four pillars by which our subconscious during the first seven years, or what's called the birth period, are being programmed because mom and dad are like gods, right? They change us, they feed us, they you know, put us in the thing, crime, they hug us, they take us on these foot, they put in these big motor vehicles that drive us all over the freaking place. They introduce us to our siblings who pick on us and do all kinds of weird shit. We're like, Muh! trying to figure everything out. Our subconscious is just a big computer. It's just recording the whole time. It doesn't do judgment value, family. That's only done at the conscious guardian level, right? So during those first seven years, we are being literally programmed to become who we'll become in later parts of our law of curiosity. Somewhere in our late teens and then our early 20s, we start showing up as these people. Now, here's the irony. If you're a parent, you can go, damn, the apple in the tree. Ironically, though, don't our children tend to bring out the parts of us that piss us off about ourselves the most? That just sucks. <laughs> and being a three-time father and a, a grandfather myself, there's times you're like, you know, you're lucky our last name is Fox and not Tiger because tigers eat their young. So, <laughs> but you get the opportunity to look at your children and go, am I teaching them as I think they should be or are they learning as I am? And that's when you get to look in the mirror of the self. So the law of curiosity gives you a really good idea of where you are in your life and how these things come to pass and they start to emote from our subconscious. See, as we get older, we start to recognize, and this is the fun thing, as we get older and you start to get around my age, you start to go, damn, I am like my parents. Crap, how'd that happen? I work so damn hard not to be like them. Shit, shit, I sound like my dad. And you start to look like when you get the gray hair, it really kind of pisses you off, right? Here's the deal. That's because the law of curiosity is starting to evoke itself. It's starting to unfold as the subconscious pushes up over time and the belief structures that have been dormant, the ones that we have done so much work to push down, to compress and suppress and oppress over time and our effort to be mind invested, to be mindset oriented, to be in control and power and all of these other things are now coming forward because the one that's always running the show is deep down here in places we don't want to talk about. We call that the architect. So number two, as you see on your screen, seminal law governs the seven laws of the lives that we move in seven year cycles, right? Ironically, Mog. For those of you who do numerology, number seven is, that's right, the number of spirituality. Go figure, right? As we do and we understand, we allow these awarenesses within our architect journey to employ in a harmonious flow, which is a really fancy way of saying, look, there's a famous song we all learn as a kid, merrily, 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 life is but a dream, right? Life is but a dream. So the question is, are we architecting our life as our journey wants to unfold and will naturally unfold? Are we constantly fighting ourselves? Now, if you're like me, I know for the, when I was in my 20s and early 30s, man, I was fighting everything. My heart said, do this. I'm like, oh, hell no. We're not going to do that. We're going to go do this. Uh, my heart said, do that. No, no, no way. People think I'm nuts. Uh, my heart said this. No, 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 no. We can't do that, Travis, because I can't handle the judgment of my own mind. It's easier to distract myself with whatever. Right nowadays, it's Netflix or whatever the hell they distract themselves with. Maybe the internet at large. So we get to flow with that life, and I'm not talking about just hey man, everything's cool, smoke a bowl, yeah, jam on, bro. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about flowing with the natural being that you are. But that's the wealth of who you are. And if you haven't dived or dove, excuse me, dove into your depth of your wealth, you are subject to constantly chasing the riches. Here's the problem with richness: you constantly have to replenish it. Wealth moves differently, moves solidly. When you have a lot of money as an example, which is a reflection of some of your internal wealth, meaning how I convey value to others. When you have wealth, you move differently. You're not in a rush. You don't need to close the deal. You don't push hard. You don't grind every single day. You, you are in a different state of being because you know. But when you're constantly chasing riches, got to get to work, got to get on time, got to get this, got to get promotion, got to, that person that's pissing me off. I got to get this new thing. I got a house, da, da, da. 
you ever notice you're always chasing your tail? Has anybody experienced that yet besides me or am I just the only wacko on the planet? Okay, I'll be the one. Cool, works for me. Number three on the, on the screen. Wealth is a result of development. Capital, an effect of one's development of the law of love. Now, this is the dynamic shift here, family. Here we go. Many people are like, hey, this is a great opportunity. We're going to do a reset button. Everybody and their mother's a freaking coach now because they got nothing better to do than to sit there and create crap on TikTok or Zoom or Instagram or whatever crap. And that's fine. I'm not saying they don't have value to say, but where were you before then? A conveyance of value in, in exchange for getting quick money is not what we're talking about. I'm talking about the wealth of developing who you actually are and pulling off the layers of the BS, getting this thing that not to be so full of crap all the time, or at least own that you are and be able to spot it, identify it, rework it and move something that you can do uh, instantaneously to, to let yourself be who you are and pull those layers off. We call those emotionality. How do we pull those emotions out? How do we get that hurt and that sorrow and that pain and that fear? Man, fear is a mother, isn't it? It's always there, just constantly bombarding your brain. The world's going to blow up. Well, guess what, boys and girls? We're giving it a trial run. We're doing it right now just to remind us that we can face our fear. But guess what? We're doing it all together. And here's what this festival is all about, to invite you and everyone you know to remember way down here the law of curiosity still applies. The law of love says, guess what? And what we call in the architect language, the noble truth. No one gets off this planet alive, not one. But life without living is the ultimate undoable regret. Isn't it time we start investing in the wealth of pulling out who you are versus stuffing down who you think you're supposed to be? And invest in a wealth set of skills that will truly allow you to create law of attraction, law of love, and architect your life your lifestyle, where you want to go from who you really are and the power that you already are, already have and already possess, but have hypnotized yourself to believe you only have so much of that you can only get this or that, or gee, if I was a guy or if I was a girl, whatever BS your brain keeps telling you, none of which is real. Because remember this puppy, you're going to have to give it back when you leave the theme park of life. You got to give back the spacesuit, right? That's called death. Now, just before death comes, there's this beautiful moment of awareness of, shit, I really got to live my ass off. The question is, you're getting to do it now where we get to face death in a whole new way. Are there many deaths? Absolutely. There's death of a dream. There's death of a relationship. There's death of siblings. There's death of parents. There's death of who I thought I was. There's death of identity, deconstruction. Great. But death becomes a welcome part of the journey. And I'm not taking light of what we're talking about right now. I'm talking about the world has given us an opportunity to face our fear of being afraid of what is inevitably going to happen. And we are so full of crap of denying that we think we're going to be able to make sure my life goes a long time. I'm going to live till I'm 102. Bullshit. You don't know that. Stop bullshitting yourself and using that as an excuse to wait. There is no such thing as the right time. Bullshit. I got pregnant at 17. Sure as fuck wasn't the right time. Fucked all my shit up, but it wasn't a fuck up. It actually invoked what I needed to because I wasn't able enough to get out of this head. And just like all of us, until we understand how this works, you are destined and doomed to be run by the mad mind that's running around on top of your shoulders. It is the way of things. You want clinical proof? I can prove it to you. Right now, I'll guarantee all of you watching this and all of you watching the replay, Yes, we're having this dialogue. You're listening to Travis Fox and the architects and this is great and you're motivated and you're excited and some weird shit's going on because you keep wandering off in your brain thinking about groceries and what's coming up next and do you need to check your social media while you're here? Maybe you got to scratch your ass too. I don't know why, but you've got all these random thoughts and guess what? You don't either. You have the illusion that you're in fucking control. You are an expert. You're the law of attraction. Bullshit. Let go and dive. Jump into the one place that scares the crap out of you the most and the world at its beautiful awareness and the law of love because we're all so fucking hypnotized says stop. Listen, 7.4 billion of you who all think you're smarter than cheese, right? All right, you guys are all got it. Okay, here's the deal. If you all think you're so freaking smart, how come you can't stop and literally sit still for 10 minutes without losing your shit? 
you got to go get toilet paper. Oh my God, my asshole is going to be dirty. Holy shit, the world's coming to a crap bag. I can't believe it. Oh my God, I got to go spend all my money and make somebody else a shit ton of money because I can't just go to the shower and clean my ass with a garden hose like you did when you were 12. Are you kidding me right now? You tell me that you're in control and that your alignment is in alignment with your heart and you're all, come on, y'all. Let's have some church up in this mother. Let's talk some shit. Because the truth is, we're so full of what we think is important, and we have forgotten by choice. We chose it. That's the bitter pill we don't want to swallow. I know I'm a card-carrying member. I'm the one that said, yep, I got it all figured out. I got all these letters before and after my name, and I'm smart as shit. No, I'm not. I'm dumb as a box of rocks. Because everything I learned up here, I had to learn from the past. But everything I learned here came with me into the experience, just like you. When, oh, when? Budding architect, will you wake up? When will you care for yourself? When will you start to understand? Nobody knows when death comes, but I get to guarantee right now it's knocking on your fucking door. It's letting you know it's here. Just in case you need a gentle reminder of whoops, that's right. The noble truth of the architects still apply. Nobody's getting off this planet alive. Isn't it time we start living our ass off? But if we don't know how to unwind the programming of seminal law and the true law of love, we cannot attract what we really want because what we think we want and what's really going on here are not in alignment, period. Mic drop. I only have my glasses, but I'll drop those. Okay, let's move on. Is this hitting anybody? I can't see the chat, so I'm hoping that some of the architects are answering questions for me. So I hope you guys are doing that. I know uh, Chelsea's doing that as well, but thank you. And by the way, I have zero passion about this. So if you really want to hang out with someone who has zero passion, you should hang out with me, okay? Because I'm boring, right? Mm, okay, so let's discover your true wealth because we've got about a half hour. I want to make sure I'm on time here before you know, Chelsea pulls the plug and says, all right, we've had enough of that crazy little tune. All right, here we go. Most approach money, capital, as a cause to happiness, freedom, choice, and often lovability. Now let's expand that a little bit and let's talk about some chakra work. How many of you know the difference between the second chakra and the fourth chakra? All right, I'll put it to you real simple. Sex and heart, make it simple. We'll, we'll dive into it later. Chelsea can talk to you about it. The architects can talk to you about it. I'm gonna talk about this for today. Here's a real simple scenario. See, I spent most of my life believing that money made me, made me sexy and my sex made me lovable. Has anybody had that journey besides me? I know that's a big pill to swallow. You're like, the tribe is a Thursday in the afternoon. We're not supposed to be talking about this deep stuff. Damn, I thought we were going to talk about, you know, toilet paper and Budweiser. Nope. We're going deep down the rabbit hole, boys and girls. We're going to jump. I told you if you wanted to hang out in the shallow end of the pool, you should probably leave, come back later. Okay, here's the deal. So we agree that money creates an external value of what I'm worth. But if I don't make a lot of money and I'm not sexy and I don't get the sex that I want, then I must not be lovable and I don't make more money. Now I start creating from this thing, or we call in the architect language, the infinite loop. We keep doing the same things over and over and over again, investing in our mind, in our mind, in our mind, in our mind, and forgetting that it has nothing to do with us running the real show. It's a top end driver. It's just a big antenna. If y'all remember, I mean, remember those old like Union 76 balls that are like orange and 76 on, you put them on your antenna on your truck and they go like, bang, 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 bang. like that's what our head is on top of our body. You're just a big Union 76 ball bouncing all over the place going do, 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 acting like it's in control. It's not, but it likes to tell you that it is because deep down inside, if you really look at it right below the noble truth or right after the noble truth, which is none of us get out of this life alive, what we call an architect language is called the thin membrane of fear. And that fear says that one day this is going to terminate. This body that I call Travis and whatever you got yours named by. And by the way, did you notice you didn't even get to pick your name? You didn't get to pick your name. We're so freaking gullible. We're like, oh, you're going to call me Travis? Oh, okay. Well, you're mom and dad, so I'll call myself Travis. That sounds good. All right, fine. I'm Travis. Bullshit. You didn't pick your name, but you're in control. Let's have some fun with ourselves and take a moment to go, we are so full of shit. This is hilarious. So we value ourselves based on capital external. We're all chasing the money, chasing the money, chasing the money. Here's the irony. Money is absolutely fake in these times. Every country in the world, $2 trillion, $3 trillion stimulus packages. Where the F did it come from? Where do you think it came from? They're making shit up. Why? Because it's the illusion of keeping it real. Now, I'm not saying it doesn't have value, and I'm not saying it doesn't have things. I get it. What I'm saying is your value is externally represented by how much value you're creating from the law of love versus how much I think I need to get 
to show that I'm sexy, that I'm lovable because then my sex makes me lovable. That was my, that was my whole mantra, right? I, I had really good sex and I slept with everybody and I showed them doggone and I was really good because I'm tantric. Yes, I am, by the way, but I'm tantric. Then I'm lovable. Yeah, but you're still an asshole. Now what? Shit. I got to unwind that personality and start to look at, well, wait a minute. Maybe I'm creating this because I'm still not looking at the places of myself of how come I'm so afraid to be in love, starting with myself. How come I'm so afraid to love every part of me, including the darkness for which I run, like you? How come I'm afraid to just be loving because doggone it, people will like it. But if, but if I don't like me, then I got to look at how they don't like when I'm lovable. So I've got to go back to being an asshole because that's safe. You see how this starts to work, fam? Our true wealth is already there. It's not something you need to discover. Like, I need to discover my passion, Travis. I'm going to go to a jump. And I'm going to find my passion. Drop it on the side of the fucking road. I mean, did you forget it and leave it at the grocery store when you're getting toilet paper? What do you mean you need to go find your passion? You are fucking passion. Be it. Be passionate that you have the opportunity to take a fucking breath. And don't just write it in your gratitude journal. I am grateful that I got to take a breath. I am grateful that I got to walk. I am grateful that I got shit tons of toilet paper and my asshole will be clean. Cut the crap. That's not gratitude. That is writing gratitude from a mindset perspective. Being gratitude is being able to look at a mountain and go, holy shit, I'm just a grain of sand. I'm just a grain of sand. This thing's been here for a billion years. The gratitude is, oh my God, I can actually breathe because damn, this virus kills indiscriminately. It doesn't care if you're young or old. Doesn't care if you're male or female. Doesn't care if you're rich or poor. It'll kill your ass. Wake up to who you are. It's already there. You want to you want to find passion in life? Be it. Become passionate about everything. That's a dandelion. I love dandelions. Dandelions are fucking great. This is auditive. This is great. Why? Because a dandelion grows and you have no idea how it actually works. If you're really going to be honest with yourself, you have no idea how it goes like that and opens up. What tells it to do that? Ah, I don't need to know to understand, to cooperate with that which opens the dandelion can open me up too. I just have to take life as but a dream and row merrily, merrily down the stream. So if you look at number two on your screen, capital is a slave and not your master. Simply means it's not the end result. If you wanna know how much value of your heart and the law of love you're conveying, you'll watch how much money comes your way because you can qualify it based on the love you're expelling. I'm not talking about, well, doggone it, people like me. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being loving of everything. Love the darkness in your, yourself. Love the anger in yourself. Love everything part of it. Sometimes that's difficult because we have to look in the mirror of ourselves when our reflection comes back to us in the form of another person. But that's where we get into the darkness. That's where more of your light shows up. Not when I'm great and the world's awesome and doggone it, people like me and you can like it too. And the law of attraction, you just uh, shut up. You can't just love half when it's convenient, family, because the undercurrent is what's really running the show. So if you want to use money as a way to determine whether you're lovable, give a bunch of love and watch how money changes. And here's the irony of that whole twist. Money will not nearly have the importance and value you thought it did when it shows up. Because you'll be so in love of being love. And I'm not talking about just faking it. Like, oh, God, if people love me, I'm talking about being it, being passionate. Let it go. Why not? You're getting out dead anyways. You can't save it up for a rainy day and all of our 401ks have turned to shit again. So holding on to that ideology doesn't make a damn bit of sense. So let's start giving to the wealth and investment that we know returns in X's, meaning multiplies, right? And that is love. So look at the third one. Wealth is as a, um, wealth desire is an end consumes our spacesuit via disease, anger, mistrust, non-harmonious states of being, and it is capitalized on purpose because that's how architect is actually spelled, architect of being, and you see I is there in parentheses. I is is something we train all the architects in. It's called the internal state. We actually teach you how to shift your internal state for real, not fake it till you make it because who wants to be fake? We're already faking it anyways. Aren't we done being fakes? Let's cut the crap. Let's shift our internal state and then bang, watch how we can create or we call architect up. It comes from inside out or which is called the golden loop. How do we create from there? It is a step-by-step -step process, by the way, and it's easily done. You just have to actually do it, right? So here's the last part. Wealth combined with spiritual architecture as the emotional compulsion then becomes nothing more than a means to an end, a journey. 
nothing more. The journey is the wealth as we understand we are connected to great architect and to that true well, um, that is the true wealth of a man or a woman. Now, I'm not talking about doggone it, you need to be Billy Graham. Billy Graham was an awesome preacher and I loved his journey because he walked it from beginning to end. You got to honor that journey, regardless of your religious ideology. And there are many great teachers like that. But as an example, the journey becomes interesting. You all know that. I'm not telling anything right there you don't already know, right? In fact, most of you go, yeah, I believe it's a journey, but I got to pay my electric bill. All right. You don't have to pay your electric bill. I mean, it's nice to do that because electric's a little more interesting than not having it. I get it. But there's choices along the way. And one of the things like, for example, you learn in the jump is the difference between a decision and a choice. And boy, they are radically different. Radically different. Travis, I make decisions every single day. No, you don't. By the time it got to your conscious mind, it was already long made. You just became aware of it. Woo-hoo. Someone else is running the show, boys and girls. We got to get down here in deep, dark places. We don't want to talk about cocktail parties. So the wealth of you is about how do I let out my heart? How am I, how come I'm not willing to do it? It's see, it's not, I need to become more of, it's I need to let go of. I need to let go of that anger. I need to let go of that resentment. Is it difficult? Yes. Are people sometimes pain in the ass? Yes, but so are you, all right? Is it challenging these times? Of course, because fear consumes us. It'll, it'll literally consume you energetically, you're vibratorily. You've heard of the great teachers here at the Carona Fest who have all taught you from the vibratory, from the bulls, from manifesting to meditation. Two of the architects on here are bona fide yogis and architects themselves from very diverse uh, backgrounds, but change their lives. You can too. So we all are saying the same thing. The question is how come no one has a step-by-step and willing to do it? So it's not about becoming more. It's about letting go and becoming less of who you think you are. That is the wealth that we're talking about today. Jill, so I'm running a little bit long, but I'm gonna get into here in 10 more minutes. We're gonna go at a high rate of speed. Is that cool? Awesome, you are good. Good to go. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. She's the boss, so I gotta make sure I get off stage when she tells me to. So here's something I want you just to look at real quick. Obviously, I, I didn't say this. You can see the credit given with credit due to Mulford. A man of success is the man possessed, interesting word, possessed of great spiritual understanding and every great fortune comes of superior and true spiritual power. Now, I'm not talking about spiritual power like preaching from a pulpit or going into religious ideology. That's a choice if you want to. I'm not judging it if you want to. I'm talking about at a macro level, all of us, when you want to create massive wealth externally, it comes from the wealth you already are, not what you learn to be. Now, I'm not saying this thing doesn't have value to you and it doesn't, it can't be used, but why not use it as a true slave versus it being your master? That's the difference. See, when, you, when you're coming from a wealth perspective, yeah, money just shows up because you don't have to pay attention to it because it's not your primary field thought process of focus. In fact, the more you focus on it, the more you kind of repel it, right? You notice that? I'm talking, I got to get a, I got to get a thousand dollars by the end of the month, Trav, I got to pay my rent. Shit, everybody, I try to get all the money that I've loaned to people, they don't have it back. I can't, them seriously, they can't get it back, they don't pick up your phone. Uh, you know, I can't get any more work, I can't do anything on my marketing plan, on my advertising, my landers aren't working, all this other crap isn't working. Why? Because we've gone into the money being the focus versus the wealth being released, being the real gift. If you just give it away, it'll show up. I know you're going to go, Travis, come on, that's just a bunch of bullshit. Oh, I know, I've been doing it for 30 years. Had money, lost money, had money, lost money, had money. Done it. Learned it through the laws of seminal law, which is what you'll get at the end of this program. You'll see the laws, the actual full uh, seven, seven laws. But we really start to understand spiritual power. Spiritual power doesn't mean, you know, everybody sings kumbaya. Spiritual power means you understand a step-by-step process to wake yourself up, to remember who you are, who you beautifully already are, who you agreed to be when you came into this world as whatever. In this case, I decided to come in as Travis. Okay, cool. But when you leave, the body we call Travis gets to stay behind. And who you really are goes on to the next journey or recycles around whatever your belief structure is, is up to you. But spiritual power is I understand that I am the architect of my life. I am the architect of my lifestyle. I architect the journey that I want to experience, the people I want to meet, the unwinding of who I thought I'm supposed to be and waking myself up from the slavery that I have encapsulated myself in through my mind through the heart itself of what we call the architect. That is the spiritual power we're talking about. Hopefully that is resonating with you by now. Key, the key to external wealth creation is understanding that the power to create wealth are in three parts. So that's when the member says, and you'll see this in the film and it releases tomorrow at 12 o'clock. I'll make sure everybody has the link. You can go download it, watch it home because you got nowhere else to go. So you might as well watch that too. Figure out how to do something. Cost you nine whole bucks, right? Is 
It's not, I think it, and it shows up. Because if that was the case, everybody would have Lamborghinis, 50,000 square foot houses and money coming out their rear end. They wouldn't care about toilet paper because you'd all have bidets. So that didn't work out too well. So we got to understand that law of attraction is not linear. Law of love is not linear. It's three-dimensional. That's why it's called architecting 360. Because you are an interconnected being, interconnected to every other being and everything else on this planet. You can call that whatever you want, family. We just call it great spirit for simplicity. And all connected things on this planet are subject to the noble truth. None of us get out of this life alive. Plants, animals, even mountains come down. Icebergs do too. World shifts itself, tectonic plates, and us. But it constantly keeps moving, right? So now if we start looking at it from a three-dimensional perspective, we can understand that it's not, I think, and I show up like 500 years ago when we thought the earth was flat and you just fall off the damn thing, right? Oh, we found out it's three-dimensional. Oh, no shit. We go around, we come back to where we started. Yeah, commonly called the hero's journey. Same thing with this in wealth creation. It is idealization, then it's visualization, and then it's materialization. But I want to qualify number two. Idealization is I've got this idea that comes up from nowhere. I don't know where I had it, but I had a moment of inspiration. Break the word down inspiration, family. I had a moment of being in spirit realized. Inspiration. I was in spirit realized. Gee, that isn't here. It's here. I had that moment of inspiration. Then I start to visualize. Visualize isn't, well, I'm just going to sit there and imagine myself in a, in a purple Lamborghini. And I got, you know, this hot chick behind me over here. And I got all my friends. And we're going to go play some poker. We're going to fuck shit up. Okay, that's fun for a weekend for about three minutes. But that's not real passion, right? Visualization is the holding of the energy first. Holding of the emotional space of what it feels like as you begin to take this journey towards whatever you want to create, right? So for example, if you wanna create wealth, what is the wealth feeling that drives it? I feel satisfied, I feel inspired, I feel passionate, I feel love, I feel validated, I feel amazing. Hold that space of the feeling first and then materialization starts to happen through a wonderful thing we call in architect language, MOG or poly poly. You'll see that right on your screen, okay? And that's the second part. Thus, we to thus to have vigilant awareness over a step by step or poly poly, which is Swahili for one step, one breath, right? A focused laser like shining from our intimate connection with great architect becomes the key to our external wealth. This is the golden loop defined. If you want to know more about it, go to the jump and I'll make sure everyone gets a free link through Chelsea here and at Corona Fest to go for the first three days of the jump. Experience it, experience it. But it's a 14 day process. Trust me, you're going to want to go the first three days, you'll experience it. It's free, it costs you nothing, right? If you're going to jump, jump. But when you start to understand these three steps, you go, oh, now I understand what it is that I can be, not do, in order to become the life and the lifestyle that I want. And I'm investing in the wealth of myself because, see, one of the things that we all get stuck in, and I don't know if all of you experienced this. I know I did. When I was 15 years old, my life had to be planned out. You got to know what you're doing when you're going to university, Travis. You got to know when you're going to play the PGA Tour. You got to know what you're majored in. You got to know. You got to have your life planned out, son. You got shit coming up. The days are over. Are done. Like that old John Cougar Mellencamp, you know, uh, hold on to 16 as long as you can because changes come around real soon that make us women and men. <laughs> We're just bigger little kids, right? I'm just a 49-year-old, 12-year-old. Okay, cool. Why not? But we get into the space of having to have our life planned out. And here's the funny thing. The more you plan it, ID, strange, odd, weird things happen. It don't quite work out the way you planned it. So isn't it time we abandon the blueprint of mindset visualization and adopt architecting our life from an emulsified feeling to allow the materialization to show up because the external represents the value, which means we're on the path. All we got to do is follow it, which means the more I stay in my feeling, the more it materializes, the more I show up. Well, oh, Donna Travis, it can't be that easy. Isn't that a mindset too? Where'd that belief structure come from? Bet you don't know. Hmm. Just saying. Okay. A little bit more. We're going to go a little bit deeper. How then do we control our thoughts? Woohoo! Lifelong journey. What is the process? For this session, it's simple. Okay. If our thoughts are destructive in any way, shape, or form, then we root them out, regardless of how small in appearance they might be. For inside these thoughts are the seeds of our own destruction. And, that, and during that creative process, we will create sickness, disharmony, 
disease, et cetera, as a means of confirmation of our creation and its expanded, and expand its growth, which is a really fancy way of saying, you know, those little small thoughts I don't think about, nah, you know, just don't worry about that. It just comes on by, let it go. But if you notice, it keeps coming back. And the more and more you don't tend to the garden of your mind, those seeds plant. Now, you know how this works, family, because I'll show it to you in nature, because if you want external proof, how many of you have worked your butt off on your house or your apartment in your driveway, and you made sure there's no damn weeds on that driveway, you come back a month later, and somehow, some's a bitch, one weed has come up through the crack of your, your concrete, and you're like, damn it, I just sprayed crap all over this thing. How do these weeds keep coming back? Because the seeds and the power that drive them doesn't ever stop just because you think you're not thinking. In the famous words of Zig Ziglar, you got case of stinking thinking, right? Now stinking thinking means when I ignore the one little thought, when I allow my mind to become the master of my being, when I allow my mind to think one thing that is not in alignment with exactly what I wanna feel and I allow it, it is a subconscious agreement that it is okay. I'm going to let that one sit on you for a second. You are agreeing with your mind that it's okay to think that thought, to be in that space, to allow that seed to plant. And just like that weed on your driveway and, and concrete, it don't take much for life to spring up because the cycle keeps running because the law of attraction is not linear. It is three-dimensional, which means there's a whole bunch of other shit going on below the scenes. That's why it's called subconscious. Sub meaning below your conscious awareness. Now, come on, y'all, you know some of this already. The question is, are we willing to own it? See, because the reason why I open up and, I, and it's perfect about the whole toilet paper thing is when we do our live events and the architects and I are together, and we talk, many will tell you that I open up the same way. Hi, my name is Travis Fox and I am full of shit. Everything you're about to hear, you already know somewhere deep down inside, you have forgotten. I don't have a damn answer for you, but I've got a series of really qualified questions and a step-by-step system so you can wake yourself up to remember who you are, not who you think you are. And my job today or tonight is to invite you to start that process to remember that simple step-by-step. -step. If you're interested, stick around. If not, thanks for coming out tonight. We appreciate you buying a ticket. That's how I open up. Now, it's not done to be funny or comical, although I tend to be funny and comical because I find things funny and comical. But more importantly, it's to invite the truth. None of us have the answers, but we do have the truth for you, for your particular journey that you chose to create in this lifetime, for the particular gift that you are that is waiting for the seed to continue to grow up if you will just stop spraying the weed eater on it from your mind. Allow yourself to become that which you already are, not that which you seek to think you should be. Moving on. And I'll finish up real quick here, Chelsea, because I know I got to get you off here. Woo! Finding, finding wealth internally. We can only see what has already been created in our objective worlds, meaning inside here. Right? Yet we can visualize what already exists in the subjective world, thus holding earnestly to our passionate desire desires. We will experience that, um, that which is in the infinite or I in finite becoming finite and wonderfully experienced great architect will weave the future and we will follow our path mog to mog. There is only one, is there really only one real sense then? That's the sense of feeling. All of the senses become fractional versions of the feeling as a whole. And this foundation of wealth and youth is our feeling connected to the energetic source of omnipotence and unlimited resources. You are already wealthy. You just keep giving away your riches to the same old thing, expecting a different result. See, the world in here is unlimited. See, because the I or the I am is within you. You are the I am, the I in finite, meaning the I, great spirit came down and became finite, became Travis, you became you, right? And the finite world is external. So the I in finite creates into the finite. We are the creators. We are the architects of this journey because we architected it long before we even realized our name, Travis. Your name, Connie, Rob, Mary, Charles, whatever your name happens to be in this particular spacesuit, you are already wealthy. Mog to Mog is an acronym we talk about in the architect language, and you'll learn that when you jump into the platform. It's called Moment of Grace, or you may know that as synchronicity or coincidence, deja vu, heebie jeebies, the hairs on your arms, goosey pimples, whatever you want to call it. We call it Mog as a way to communicate with each other, going, Did you see that moment where our architect said, Hey, you have a choice, or are you going to make a decision? 
You could choose to follow our architect's heart even though you may not understand what in the hell you're being invited to. Or you can keep going back to sleep and doing the same stupid crap and hoping to get a different result. You choose. There's no judgment in it. It's just a choice. And we talk to each other and we go, hey, Rob, did you see that mog? And if they see it and two of us see it, three of us see it, all of a sudden now we start co-creating because we all go, oh, there's a mog. Let's go together. And now we journey down this path called life with people who are wonderfully individualistic and yet wonderfully connected from a thing we call heart or architect. Isn't that what we all really want anyways, is to be something a part of bigger than ourselves. And see, the funny thing is you already are. The question is, are you willing to choose to jump in or are you gonna continue to just wander around, beat your head against the wall going, I gotta find my passion. I gotta discover who I am. You already are. That is what makes you wealthy. Almost done. So here's just some gifts that we're gonna give you right now that you can actually take and I'll wrap it up and get out of Chelsea's hair. And she has a lot of hair. I'm jealous because I used to have a lot of hair, but I don't have any more. But that's cool. Step number one, and Rob is, Rob is sitting there right there. Rob has got it too, right? Rob, welcome to the party, pal. All right, step number one is your awareness. We must become aware of what's going on first in order to become like anything, right? If we just keep doing the same stupid stuff. There's an old saying that says, you know, if you beat a, be, keep beating your head against the wall and expect it to become a door, you're probably going to get a headache. That is what I'm talking about in awareness. So awareness, become aware of the truth within and then watch how quickly every one of these mindset voices that you think is important tries to tell you no, tries to tell you why you're not wealthy, give you all the excuses of bullshit, tell you all the things that you have to do in order for it to be the right time for that, this line up and all these things have to happen. Watch how fast I'll give you your first awareness of this puppy is trying to jump in. So become aware of the truth within that material wealth is a direct correlation of our internal state of harmony. Happiness and passion to great architects invitation to the adventure of a lifetime. You see, if you only had 30 days left to live and you knew you were leaving the planet, would you be doing anything you're doing right now? And if you're like most, your head's shaking from left to right going, hell no, Travis, I'd be off traveling. I'd be going out seeing things. I'd be doing it. What are you waiting for? Giving you a reminder that death comes for us all. Whether it's the coronavirus or some other means, it doesn't matter. But would you rather be architecting your life and your lifestyle or it just happened to you? You get to choose right here, right now, today, because the wealth within you already exists. Everything's changed now and it will be forever changed, at least in our lifetimes and perhaps our children's lifetimes as well. The question is, are you aware of it? And are you willing to be aware of that beautiful heart pain that's happening right now where your heart's beating through your chest like, yeah, I want to go, Trav. That sounds great. Cool. There's a link right there. Chelsea just put it up. It is a free three days to the jump. It costs you absolutely nothing. There's no upsell. There's no bullshit. There's no, but wait, there's more. If you buy two, you get three. It's just get to go. You get three more hours of listening to a complete lunatic, which is me. And all the architects are there for you. We're all graduates. You get free yoga from Rob and, and, and Connie. You get meditations. We got new architecture coming in where people are doing therapeutic art from some of our reaching Greece and graduates. And you get to experience it. You don't get to just see, well, gee, I'll buy it and be let down by some other bullshit. You get it for free. And guess what? Tomorrow, coming out at noon Pacific Standard Time, Beyond the Secret, The Awakening, the long-awaited follow-up film to The Secret, which I know a little bit about. I was one of the co-producers, and I'm involved in it. I'm actually one of the people in there with the great castmates, releases tomorrow. You're going to get a double whammy of architecture right here through the Corona Fest and what Chelsea and her entire team has put together. And she has worked her ass off. You can tell. I know this young lady. I've known her for a couple of years, and she has busted her ass to put this event together because they're not easy families. Like, oh, well, I'm just going to do an online event because I'm sitting at home and I'm going to be a social media content provider. Bullshit. She's coordinating teachers and guides all over the freaking planet. This is a pain in the ass. She's going to, I was talking to her last night at 2 a.m. my time. This girl busted her ass so that you have an invitational opportunity from people like myself, the architects, and all the other great teachers and guides that she has brought on throughout this week and tomorrow to change your life, to discover the wealth you are, which starts with awareness, which is step number one right there on your screen. Step number two, action. Becoming aware is only half-assed. Action is what makes it the complete part. Action step. I'm going to ask you to do this in stillness. I want you to connect with something bigger than you, and that calls to your heart regardless of what your hypnotic mind thinks. Here's what I mean by stillness. I'm going to invite all of you to do an exercise. Not right now because I know I'm running short on time, and Chelsea's being polite, letting me go a little bit long, and I'm going to wrap it up here in about three minutes. But I want you all, when this is done, I want you to take the registered link, start the jump, and you're going to start stillness for one minute, one whole measly little minute 
of your journey of your life, I want you just to close your eyes, sit in the chair, put your hands in your lap and just close. I want you to notice how fast. That's all you gotta do is just notice. You don't have to change anything. Just notice how many thoughts go through your mind. How many scratches you didn't have before you closed your eyes? How many random thoughts about groceries and kids and what's on Netflix and what's coming up next? And oh my God, who's that crazy man Chelsea brought on the thing? Holy crap, this dude, this guy's a loon tune. Where did all these thoughts come from? Don't need to know, just need to be aware that that's the first step of where your hypnotic mind is seeking to pull you out of that which you already are. The stillness and the calm and the harmony and the beautiful loving being you came in as and will leave as. The question is what you do in the middle is your choice. That's called life. Question is, are you ready for it? Step number three, what's the objective of growing, understanding riches versus wealth? You become an alignment, that which you really desire deep down here in places you don't talk about at cocktail parties and the, and the stores and on social media, that which is bigger than you and calls into the light our fear, our excuses, our judgments of ourselves and others and keeps us paralyzing from mogging on. Remember, mog to mog, taking the journey. You're on the adventure of a lifetime. Isn't it time you wake the F up and stop acting like you got it all figured out or that you need it figured out? Bullshit, you've already tried that for 30 years and it's made you batshit fucking crazy. It's made you nuts, it's made you angry, it's made you pissed off and divorced and you have arguments all the time because you still don't feel alive with yourself. Isn't it time we just stop investing in the riches of your mind? and become the beautiful fucking wealthy creature that you already are and go on the adventure. Because when you go to a theme park, you don't give a shit. You're riding the roller coasters. You're eating cotton candy. You're playing the games. You're having an experience. But then as soon as you leave the theme park, you turn into an adult asshole. Well, that don't make a damn bit of sense. You're in the biggest theme park of life, the ultimate virtual reality called your life. Create your freaking ass off because you already have the wealth within you. You just got it mucked up with some hurts and some traumas and some fears and a bunch of bullshit through compression, suppression, and oppression, and bang, that's it. The question becomes, are you ready to jump? As I promised, here are the seven life cycles. We'll put them up there, make sure you have them. They're in the jump on the back end, by the way, when you jump over into the architect community. And by the way, again, Chelsea and I are actually very good friends. We have coffee whenever I'm over in Atlanta over there. Not often as much anymore because can't fly anymore, shit. But when I'm over there, we do get coffee. We do go down the rabbit hole together. I'm super grateful that she allowed me and my architects to be up on this call because guess what? She didn't have to. There are a lot of great other teachers out there. I'm not the only one. In fact, I'll tell you, I'm probably the least of all of them. Hell, my students are 10 times smarter than I am, shit. I'm just the guy running around talking crazy shit on, on shows like this now and making films now, but they're the ones that are the frontline teachers. Question is, do you wanna be a frontline teacher for real? Do you really wanna be a real architect of your life and other people's help them architect their life and lifestyle as a passion? Not because you wanna have something to do, look cool and have a little card go, I'm an architect. I'm talking about because you really give a shit. Not everybody becomes an architect master, I'll tell you up front, but everybody should at least learn the wealth skills that architect teaches you because it's clinical, it's applicational, it's experiential as you've experienced here today. Here's the back part of the, of the uh, sem uh, September law so you can see it as well. I'll make sure that's up there for you. And the link is in there. And with that, my dear friends, you have at least successfully survived your first architect session with Travis Fox and the architects. I wanna thank Connie, Rob, and Mary for being here with me today. They didn't have to be, but they did. But you will see them on the back end when you register for free. It'll take you right over. It's our interactive platform. And yes, it is interactive. It's super dynamic. The user interface is very easily done. You get your own profile. You get to work out, talk to other people and architects, and you get a bunch of audios that we have offered for free in response to Chelsea's invitation. You get yoga with Rob and Connie. You get meditations with them. I've released my first meditation in the year for immunity, specifically emotional, psychological, and spiritual immunity during these times. There are 40 other audio programs you can have access to. There's the full jump. And if you want to become an architect in training and you want to change your life and change lives around you, let us know. We'll help you get that opportunity too. If nothing else, I want to thank you. Continue to remember that you're already amazing. Get out of this thing and you don't have to become and find your passion. You already freaking are it. Live your ass off. Remember, the noble truth applies. None of us get out of this life alive, but living without fully living who you are is the ultimate undoable regret. Thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it so much. Chelsea, I'll turn it back over to you, young lady. Thank you so much. If you guys wanna all take yourself off of mute and just say thank you. We'll give some love. Thank you, Travis. That was marvelous. Thank, thank you. you. Hey, guys. Thank oh, wow. you. Hey, I, I couldn't see you all there the whole time. I thought I was talking to myself. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all these beautiful awesome. reflections. This is